Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing pretty good myself. I fully thought I was going to say I was doing just great, huh? Anyways, I'm starting to tear apart this chips in here that I just got. See if it's worth a damn. Right now you're seeing that I'm playing around with the low E string in the nut because the low E string is kind of sticking in the nut. Like, kind of like the top opening has been crushed and the string kind of clicks in and out of the nut. So yeah, that's, I guess, chips in quality. So was this chips in or is this chips in really worth the almost a year wait to get? Well, we'll find out here in a second. So right now I'm just removing the strings, getting everything uh, plucked off of it that I could possibly get plucked off of it, basically to start all over again. Uh, I ended up looking at the neck a little bit, going down the neck, and kind of looks a little wavy as far as the frets go so I want to verify that by straightening out the neck and then going through it and making sure that uh, you know whatever is there that I need to remove will be removed and replaced and make sure that the husk of it would be a good husk for doing some modding to it yeah so basically standard chips and Chinese whatever hardware basically there's no markings on either the bridge or the tailpiece pretty much a standard uh, although I did notice with the uh, sleeves that go into the body of the guitar the bridge sleeves are more of a rose gold than the tailpiece sleeves they're more of a regular gold gold cutting color uh, rose gold has got a little bit of a either a pinkish or a red to it and uh, just doesn't look like just normal gold color the tuners are the same way they also have a little bit of a rose gold coloring to them and, uh, instead of just being straight gold so I go ahead and plucked everything off the body and uh, remove all the strings get them thrown away um, I'm probably gonna put uh, I don't know, we'll see. I, I kind of like tens, um, but we'll see. Maybe it's between nines or tens. Usually I usually use that. that blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Usually I use the Ernie Ball uh, Slinkies, so I kind of like them. But I end up going with the uh, Super Slinkies, either a nine or a ten on basically all my guitars or whatever I work on. Unless specified otherwise, if somebody wants you know a different size string on there, then I'll do the different size string, but or a specialty string. So removing the truss rod cover, which was a little surprising that the cover is actually metal. I was kind of surprised, and uh, the screws seem to be um, pretty tight in place. They're not; they don't feel like they're stripped out in any way. None of the screws that I removed on this thing. Uh, were stripped out which is a very big surprise usually like the one at the back cover plates one or two of the screws are kind of um, you know a little stripped the one thing that surprised me is the way they cut out the uh, uh, way they cut out the hole in the headstock for the truss rod cover to access the truss rod it reminded me of a Gibson cutout it, it shit if it had a nut inside there to adjust a truss rod, you know, swear that it came from you know one of the Gibson factories or something someplace else. Uh, there is a little bit of some flaws in the finish I found um, on one side of the neck where the three-way switch is. Uh, it's a little bit darker in color. You can kind of see it in the video here. Um, really not that big of a deal. They did get a little bit of paint on the binding going around where the horn is, and it's to be expected. Chips in quality. Uh, so I'm going to start ripping out the electronics, getting everything off the guitar. Not too much going on as far as, you know, taking everything apart. Everything's pretty much basic disassembly. Not, uh, no problems, no issues or anything else. Uh, getting the wrench that I use for the three-way switch with this thing is a great wrench. Um, cups over the, cups over the nut that is just rounded with the, uh, uh, grooves in it and kind of get locks on there when you turn it and then it just makes it so much easier to take these nuts off and put them back on they didn't even glue the 
poker chip. It wasn't even stuck to the body. It wasn't even glued on the body. It was just sitting on top there, which I don't care for those anyway, so I got rid of it. Um, kind of took a look at the electronics a little bit, like the three-way switch, and there's nothing special about it. It's just a basic three-way switch that has no markings on it. Uh, nothing to indicate that it's an Epiphone three-way switch or anything else. So, you know, like I said before, several times so far, basic Chinese shit. So I am stripping this thing down basically to nothing. I want everything off of this body. I don't want to have nothing. Tuners are getting replaced, bridge and tailpiece, pickups, um, and kind of found out Later on in this video, that uh, I'm end up going to do, I'm going to be doing a fret job on this thing as well. Although the fret ends, they did a pretty nice job on uh, making them nice and smooth, so they don't end up like tearing up or scratching up, cutting up whatever your fingers or your hands. But they're loose; they're not uh, tight in in the uh, fret slots. So I kind of tested this out just to see. I mean, if I could pull on the fret just a very little bit and it starts coming loose and coming out, yeah, I'm going to have to do a fret job all the way down, replace them all, which works out pretty good because the uh, inlay work that is done on the neck is kind of, there are a couple of spots where you could feel the edge of the inlay work, and it's not... It doesn't pop out at you at all. It kind of has a, uh, a dull finish to it. And I, I want to fix that. Kind of like I did with the um, uh, Eric C. Les Paul uh, Dragon guitar. It's got the Chinese Dragon on it. I ended up doing a nice polishing on the uh, fretboard uh, with just with some sandpaper and ended up kind of bringing out the Dragon inlay a lot more. 1500 grit sandpaper to 2000 grit sandpaper works out really really well at that and you really don't have to reduce anything as far as a polish goes because those two sandpapers basically kind of like you get a dull finish but it just makes everything stick out more unlike what this Chinese guitar is right now with the flames it kind of has a little bit of a uh, dull really dull finish kind of like if it was hit with 800 grit sandpaper so electronics in this thing were, like I said, pretty much basic crap. Uh, the three-way switch, no markings on it, basic three-way. The pots that are inside are really small. You know, they're not much of anything as far as, you know, special. I'm sure they worked, and I'm sure they would have worked, but I don't like the crap that they, they put inside these things. Um, pickups, took them out. They have no markings on them as well. Uh, they were wax potted or are wax potted, very thin, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and start snipping over here and cutting things up and fast forwarding this video. You guys can watch it if you want or fast forward to the end, it's up to you. All right.
All right, so I'm starting to remove the rest of the frets, heating them up. I'm using a wood burning uh, slash soldering gun. I don't think it's meant to be a soldering gun, but it's a wood burning tool. And the nice thing about it, it has adjustable heat and multiple tips that you can use uh, for doing something like this, like this tip that I'm using here. It's a wide flat, and it works works out pretty good for heating up the frets and being able to pluck them out plus the heat i got it set to like a medium high uh, i really don't put it on high high because it does get hot it will melt solder um, and i don't want to melt these inlays although plucking this fret out it broke a couple of the uh, uh, pieces of the inlay on each side of the fret itself using a little bit of ca glue pushing them up against a broken uh, side and it hid the seam for it, no problems. So I was just being a little bit more careful rest, going down the rest of the neck so I wouldn't have this problem. But there's a reason for it and I'll show you at the end of basically removing all the frets. Uh, a few things that I noticed with this, um, as far as pulling the frets on these Chinese guitars. So I forgot to mention that I ended up putting a back bow in the neck uh, that helps, basically it helps to puck frets, it makes it a lot easier, breaks the glue, um, but like I said there was something with this that uh, I'll show you later on. So right now I'm just straightening out the neck and then I'll go back and check that again uh, to make sure that the neck is still straight with no gaps in the center or anything else before I start to level sand the neck where the inlays are sticking up and I'm going to do the whole neck. The neck is a 12 uh, inch radius on this. Basically all of them are. Uh, since I've been kind of like playing around with the chips and it um, seems like every one of them that I've found or have had uh, or still have are a 12 inch radius and that, that's basically about it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish straightening this thing up. It shouldn't take too much longer. And uh, then we'll get into what I found after the whole incident with plucking these frets go. And uh, possibly why the inlay was popping out with it as well. So right over here, I can kind of feel in that the frets are sticking up, or the inlays are sticking up. And... Uh, Go ahead and make sure that this thing is straight and not rocking back and forth with the straight edge, knock straight edge that I got. So, as I'm looking at this thing, I bring you in a little closer. And if you kind of see the um, powdery, and then if you look at the 
binding as well you can kind of see it too and when you look at the inlays you can really see it and it's real gritty on some of them as well that's CA glue they either um, what they call it whisk or whip the glue into the uh, fret slots after they put the frets on there and then when you look at these frets uh, they're not all bent to shit usually when I'm plucking frets I'm usually bending them in some formal way especially when I first started uh, pulling up on one side they start bending these are like still you know I have the curve in it all right so before I start doing sanding on this neck I'm gonna check out make sure that this is still pretty much level and I'm not gonna have any problems Luckily, there's some wood spots in the center over here where it's between the uh, straight edge, not straight edge. So I'm only using a not straight edge because of the glue buildup that's on each side of the fret, uh, where the fret was. Um, because if I put a beam on a cross here that's straight or flat or whatever, that's not notched, uh, it's gonna be all over the place. It's gonna rock and roll because of the raised areas where the glue was, uh, I have to sand it first and then check to see if it's straight and that's not going to work right so doing it with the notch straight edge works out perfect there's some flat spots over here where the uh, flat spots of the straight edge was on the wood I can see if there's any light coming through so I got some let's see it's 180 grit sandpaper here and it's not very very coarse but it's coarse enough to where it'll level all this stuff out and it's not going to give it a nice shine it's going to dull it out even more than what it is but if you look at how it is now, and I'll bring this up close to you to see, it really doesn't have too much of a shine to it. It is nice, but not all that great. Once I hit, start hitting it with the other sandpapers, um, it'll start bringing it out even more. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this. I got a 12 inch radius block here. I've already placed my order with Stumac. For fret wire, new tuners, so that'll be coming in soon, I hope, and take forever. When I start sanding this, I can actually smell the CA glue. So when I'm bringing this back, I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm only putting pressure on this when I go forward. Not enough pressure to where it's going to bend the headstock down and it can kind of give me like a slope over here. Only enough to where I can feel the sandpaper is gripping more. So I got some 400 grit sandpaper right here. My block is clean underneath it, so I don't have to worry about that. And this will form with the radius of the neck, so. Hit it with the six before I hit it with the eight.
picking up a fresh pack of eight. One thousand will work too. This would be a couple of pieces of sandpaper as well. Now this sandpaper is not going to shape anything, this is just going to smooth things out more. This is a polishing pad. Now I'm going to knock this with some 2500 grit. Now again, 2500 grit and 1000 isn't really going to shape anything. So doing it like this is not going to make this all wavy and it's not like I'm wet sanding. But it is popping this inlay out a lot. So we'll do a little bit of a comparison here. Now you see a little bit of a gloss and some of that inlay is really popping out really, really nice. It's not as faded as it was. And if I put a little oil on this fretboard, it's really going to make that pop out. So now I just have to wait for the frets and uh, yeah, so that'll be it. Wow, this feels real smooth, real nice. That's it for today. I have to wait for parts to come in and then I can start uh, putting this sucker back together. Thanks for watching.